Hi, my name's Ann Tweed. I'm a principal consultant here at McCrell, the Mid-Continent Research for Education and Learning, and I've written a book called Designing Effective Science Instruction. Um, it's a research-based book that brings together some strategies that help teachers with their instructional framework. And by that I mean getting the content right for kids, so strategies that support content, um, helping instruction so that students can learn conceptually, and then also developing an environment that is collaborative and conducive to learning. So it's really important to have that collaborative, um, supportive environment. And what I wanted to talk to you about today is something that comes up often when I talk with teachers. And it really revolves around their belief or lack of belief in whether all students can learn. I, I taught for maybe 28 to 30 years. And during that time, things have changed in teaching. And there used to be a belief of teachers that my job was to teach and it was the students job to learn and if I did a good job of planning and teaching then they should do an equally good job of learning. Um, we now know from the research in how students learn that there needs to be more to it than just having a belief that if I do a good job teaching that students will automatically learn. So one thing that I found is that teachers will say that they believe all kids can learn but then they'll follow it up by saying something like Yes, but if only my students had come with the right background. Yes, but if they had the support at home that they needed. Um, so in oftentimes the case is really that they say that they believe all kids can learn, but they um, also come with beliefs and background that would suggest that in actuality they don't think that all of their kids can learn, the majority of course, but that some of them probably are going to struggle. And it may or may not be their role to help them in that. So if we really are going to practice this notion of all students can learn, which is the paradigm that we currently have, we can't pick our kids. We're going to have the students that we're going to have, and we need to teach all of them. So all students can learn really means that our beliefs need to reflect that. So with that in mind, we know that there are several teacher practices that might impact whether some kids can learn and some kids don't learn. And so I just want to give you an example from my personal experience. Um, when I was teaching in science classrooms, one of the things that I thought was critically important was to give students opportunities to develop conceptual understanding. And that meant dealing with science phenomena and materials and trying to make sense of it. So I would um, talk with the teacher that was in the classroom next to me and say, oh, I've developed this wonderful learning experience for students. I'd love to share it with you. They would look at the materials and say something to me like this. Well, that's a terrific learning experience, Anne, but my kids can't do that. And she would suggest that she would be happy to take the materials and revise it in a way that turned it into a worksheet activity for kids because she truly didn't believe that they had the capacity or the capability or that it was her role to provide the supports and the scaffolding for the kids to do that critical learning. So if we really want our, our classrooms to be rigorous for kids, challenging them with the curriculum, relevant so that we relate to them, and building relationships, then sometimes it's important to examine our own beliefs and which students we're leaving behind. So with that in mind, I would like to suggest to you that teacher beliefs are really strongly held. And the first thing that we need to think about is what are our beliefs? and how do they play out in the classroom, and which students are being impacted by those beliefs. Because our actions, our voice, our body language all projects to the kids what our beliefs really are. So um, having conversations with others and finding out what their strategies are and what our beliefs really are is one of the first steps. Because if I don't recognize my beliefs and how it's impacting students, then I can't do anything about it. But um, the research I think that I've looked at suggests that you can change beliefs, but you have to acknowledge what the beliefs are. From the acknowledgement, then I can try different practices and procedures in the classroom and then see how they work with kids. And if they're helpful and they scaffold and support and give that comfort and order to the students so that they know what to do, what to expect, and how I can support them, then maybe they're going to have that learning accessible to them that wasn't before. 
if I see those positive results, then that's the time to reevaluate my belief. Because all of us at some time or another have said, well, I used to believe this, but now I believe that. Because something has happened that's changed my mind. And in this case, in teaching, what that has to be is an opportunity to try something new, to change your practice that's going to impact students for the better. So if we really want to practice this belief that all students can learn, we need to first look at what it is that we do to support students so that it's not just teaching, but teaching and learning.